Bitcoin hit yet another high. In the last 24 hours, we have seen Bitcoin on this USDT pairing pushing up to $72,800 exactly. Fantastic to see. And it does look like this move to the upside is yet complete. We can see that we are in an expanding pattern. We are correcting, cooling off with the EMA and SMA here on the early chart looking as the potential area of support. There is some divergences we want to talk about. There is also some economic news we are going to cover in today's update. Maybe have a slight look at the ETFs also. Lots to get through. Let's get straight into it, guys. So it's fantastic to have you all back with us once again before we get into today's video smash up the like button subscribe tap on the bell that subscribe of course being the most important you guys are doing fantastically well with that recently we thank you for it please continue to do so so we're going to talk about bitcoin on this push to the upside now the move that i am tracking here I think in the previous update I did for Bitcoin, you know, we were looking at this move back up into the retracement area to see how the price reacted, where we did ultimately find support on the 50 EMA and SMA on Thursday of last week. And we have seen this fantastic rise with Bitcoin setting a new all time high at $72,800. And I don't think that one is complete just yet. Now, what we can take a note of is the price coming down and we see the 50 EMA and the 50 SMA in red and green respectively. The 50 EMA sitting at 70,837, the 50 SMA sitting at 70,598 at the time of recording. And it does look likely these are going to be support. I want to quickly look at the cheeky cipher here and we can see some interesting marks on the chart we had a bit of bearish divergence and I think this divergence is now starting to play out with the price correcting to the downside. This divergence coming from the 6am UTC candle on Sunday and the 1pm candle from yesterday. So we have a bit of bearish divergence with the cipher and I do think we are going to see this price continue to correct to the downside. We can see on this early candle as of recording 8 45 a.m. UTC, around about an hour 50 minutes before this video does go live. This closed candle could get interesting should this red sell signal stay. Well, we know we are then looking for further corrections for Bitcoin's price down on this one hour time frame. We can also take a note of that stochastic position. We can see that this is curling back to the downside once again. Let's stretch it open. We are sitting at 20%, so there is a bit of cooling off still to go for this momentum. And that would bring us down into an interesting level. So where would I be targeting this to go to? Well, we can see the 50 EMA, the 50 SMA, but we can also see Equilibrium sitting at around about 69,500. It'd be interesting to see if it can get down that far. Not really an expectation of mine for now. The move to the upside is an interesting move and I'm going to have a look at this move right here in particular and work out the structure. Now yes, we're going to put on a little bit of Elliott Wave here, but this one is playing out very nicely with an impulsive movement here for Bitcoin. And that's why I think we're going to come up and test out the upper area of this expanding pattern. So what we will do is zoom on into this five wave move that I'm tracking here and we can work out a few target areas. So first of all, we want to know where this wave four is typically going to come down to. And that is between the 0.382 and the 0.5 Fibonacci levels between 71,100 and 70,500. At this point, I would expect to see Bitcoin find a reversal and push back to the upside once again, where I am targeting up towards that upper trend line. Now, why would we be targeting this? Well, we can take the high of the wave three and we'll go for the optimistic low of the wave four, finding support on that 50 SMA. And we will be targeting up towards the 1.236 and the 1.618 levels. That falling between 73,300 and 74,200. And that would also, as we can see, bring us up to test out this upper trend line once again for Bitcoin. Now that all looks great. But what we can also take a note of is we are meeting other target areas here. 
Now, first of all, this higher target area, we've been watching this for quite a while. Nick and myself, between $71,500 and $76,000. We will park that to the side for now. That's for another bit of analysis. The bigger structure we can look at here is a longer move from the 8th of March at 4 p.m. UTC to Sunday the 10th of March at 10 a.m. Looking at that as a big wave one, correcting in its wave two. All of this move here being a wave three with a wave four and another fifth wave to come. And we can start to see how these moves are starting to nest on down. Zooming out a little bit further here, well, this one looks like it can continue some more with a big wave one movement, come down into its wave two with an irregular flat correction in here. All of this being a wave three, come down into its four and another fifth wave. So when we do see those predictions of upwards of $80,000, well, we can start to see how this move in itself is a possibility. So for the shorter term play, we're obviously looking at this white movement. Let's just clear everything off. A small retrace, perhaps 71,100 to 70,500. Then another push to the upside here towards 73,324 and $74,208. Momentum on these lower time frames are in the favor of these movements. We can still see a small correction is likely to happen with the momentum on the stochastic. Then, of course, we will be looking for that next move to the upside in that fifth wave. So everything looks all good on the charts. Bitcoin's tracking very nicely. We have got some important data we have to keep in the back of our minds for today. Let's quickly head on over to that economic calendar that I do like to follow. We can see today over in America, around about two and a half hours after this video goes live, we have the core inflation rate and the inflation rate. These are going to get interesting. We can see that the inflation rate is set to remain at 3.1%. A move in either direction could spook the markets. And of course, that core inflation rate, that looks set to drop, perhaps bullish. But what we can take a note of here is we are still way off of the 2% inflation that Jerome Powell wants to get to. Of course, later in the month, we do have the Fed interest rate decision. With there's nowhere near 2% for inflation, it does seem very unlikely we're going to see a pivot in the month of March. I think it's under 3% chance of a pivot this month. So keep an eye on this inflation and core inflation. More importantly, these are going to be very interesting. And these all lead up to some more events. We're looking at Thursday for the PPI in the States, the cost of you know buying the goods from the, the retailers. That's going to be a very interesting read also. Moving forward to the 20th of March, we have that same information over here in the United Kingdom, the core inflation rate and the inflation rate. Then, of course, we do have the Fed interest rates and economic projections. March 20th is the day that I am looking forward to seeing how everything is going on. Now, of course, being over here in the UK, the inflation rate is going to be hyper important to where we are positioned over in the States, that Fed interest rate decision, I do expect that to remain at 5.5%. I don't expect to see a rate drop. Could we be surprised with a rate hike? It would probably be the best thing to do, get things under control, but we know that Jerome Powell is highly unlikely to do so. So a couple of dates to really keep our eyes on. Now, lastly, want to have a quick look once again here at those ETF holdings. Now, the last time we did look at these, they were sitting at 4.08%. And I think that's quite a staggering figure that only 4% of Bitcoin's actual supply is held up with those ETFs. We, of course, previously reported Grayscale holding over 616,000 Bitcoin. And that number has continued to drop. On the last report, we had at 400,000 Bitcoin held with Grayscale. And recently, that had dropped down to around about 398,000 with the likes of BlackRock, Fidelity, 21 shares picking up whatever Grayscale were selling off. And what we can see from February to around about March, we can see the, the slippage in Grayscale's holdings. And that's not a bad thing. We can see that Grayscale are taking profits. They, of course, bought their Bitcoin on the lead up to the ETFs well in advance. They're taking profits with these prices being so high. And we know the likes of BlackRock, 21 shares are buying up what Grayscale are selling off. I think personally, Grayscale are leading up to bigger and better um, profits over on the Ethereum ETF. I think they're positioning themselves in a fantastic position. That's of course speculation. Um, it's not fact checked. It's just what I believe is happening that Grayscale are now targeting that Ethereum ETF and looking to profit once again.
So some very interesting data there between the ETFs, macroeconomics, the Bitcoin chart. We've seen this morning that Vanek are offering zero fees on the Bitcoin ETF. I don't know, I think it's perhaps the rest of the week, maybe into the weekend. So yet another bullish thing for Bitcoin's ETFs. Everything has been just unbelievable. That price increase, seeing $72,800, I don't think we're going to stop there. I do think we're going to continue seeing the price of Bitcoin rise until certain things do play out. As always, guys, please approach these markets with caution. I do think it's going to be incredibly volatile. And yesterday, Chris made his return to the main channel covering off some very interesting and important information. That video is right here. Head on over. Check it out.